and welcome to a very special edition of the Scout Scientist. This is my first episode of the Scout Scientist Kids, so if you're in primary school then this is perfect for you. So stay tuned to learn some exciting sciencey stuff and I'm even going to show you how to make your very own DNA model at home using sweets and cocktail sticks. So, if you don't know me already, my name's Holly and this is my dog, Dixie. Here! Yeah. <laughs> She's not really got anything to do with the video, but I thought she might get the views up. Anyway, as I was saying, my name's Holly and I am a scientist. Now, I see what you're thinking, but you don't look like a scientist. Well, how about if I looked like this? Hello and welcome to the lab. Do you believe that I am a scientist now? Because I have got the big crazy hair, the white lab coat, the glasses and I'm talking like this. This is how we usually think of scientists, isn't it? Because this is how we see them on the TV. And it makes us think that all scientists must look and talk like this. Well, I'm here to tell you you don't need the glasses, the moustache, ow, the big hair or the lab coat to be a scientist. Scientists come in all shapes and sizes, male and female, big and small, from different parts of the world and with different accents. You can even get scout scientists like me. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, you don't need to change who you are to be a scientist. You can be a scientist just by being you. So now that you believe I'm a scientist, the bit of science that I'm really interested in is genomics, in other words, DNA. So what is DNA? DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. Now that's a pretty big word, so let's just stick to calling it DNA. DNA is what makes you, you. You might have heard of DNA being used to help solve crimes, but we use it in our lab because it can provide us with lots of information about a person's health. We inherit our DNA from our parents and it contains a special code that contains instructions for telling the cells in our bodies what jobs to do and how to do it but the DNA code is only made up of four letters, A, T, G, and C. And these come in special pairs, so that A and T always pair together, and G and C always pair together. These letters are also known as nucleotides or bases, and they're held together by a backbone of sugar and phosphate that's all arranged in a special structure known as the double helix. So, this is all getting a bit confusing now. So a good way to picture this is to make our very own DNA model using one of my favorite things, sweets. So why don't you give it a go yourself? All you need is some sweets and some cocktail sticks. So why don't you come with me into my kitchen and we'll give it a go. So now that we're back in the kitchen, I think someone's had enough, but we'll carry on. What you need is some long laces like this and four different colored sweets. And finally, some cocktail sticks. So first of all, you need to decide what colour is going to be what letter of the DNA code. So I'm going to say the red sweets are A, green is T, purple is G and yellow is C. So A and T always go together, so red and green are going to go together and G and C always pair together. So purple and yellow are going to go together. But you can choose whatever colours you want and whatever sweets you want. So take your cocktail stick. Now these are sharp, so be very careful or get some help from an adult. And you're going to put your DNA bases 
on each end. So I'll put a red and green together on this one, like that. Now we're going to make lots of these to fill up our backbone. So keep threading them on like that and as I said be careful and you want to make enough to fill up the length of one of your laces. As you can see I've made about six of these now and it doesn't matter what order you put them in on because your DNA code is unique to you but it does matter that the correct colours are paired together. What you want to do next is take one of your laces and these are going to thread on like a sort of ladder so it goes on one end like that and then take another lace and put it on the other side like this so these are representing our backbone our sugar phosphate backbone and these are our bases so you want to keep going adding them on and completing the ladder like this So hopefully you'll end up with a sort of ladder like this and now all we need to do is hold in the top and bottom is twist it round like this and there we have it that is the double helix so if we zoomed in to all the cells in our body so much that we could see our DNA that is exactly what it would look like now most people think that the structure of DNA was discovered by Watson and Crick in 1953, which is true, but actually a huge part of the work was done by a woman called Rosalind Franklin, who sometimes gets forgotten about. And now that we've made our DNA model, the really good thing is now we get to eat the leftovers. Well, what did you think of that? Well, if you're really interested in DNA, then a while back I made a video showing you how to extract the DNA from a strawberry. So if you're interested, why don't you watch The Scout Scientist episode eight and try it yourself at home. So I've got Dixie back with us for a quick recap on what we've learned today. So, number one, the structure of DNA is known as the double helix. Number two, Rosalind Franklin helped Watson and Crick with the discovery of the structure of DNA in 1953. And number three, you don't need to look or sound a certain way to be a scientist. Just be yourself and you can achieve anything you put your mind to. Thanks for watching. See you next time.